I've been a Chips Away franchisee for four and a half years. Before Chips Away, I was a film and television animator. I operate it as just myself and the van, and um, what I enjoy about it is that it's sort of the freedom it gives me. It's, compared to what I did before, it's a lot less stressful, um, and it's just waking up and going off and meeting new people, and, you know, if I do two or three jobs a day, it's two or three different people to meet in different places. It's, it's perfect. I started in the spring, and spring was fine, summer was good, and then round about, I guess it was November time, it all seemed to drop away. And yeah, I had a two or three months where it, where it was quite worrying, because obviously you invest a lot of money into it. But Chips Away were really good with us, helped us with marketing, and did another promotion. And in the spring, it sort of picked up again in February, and it's just continued to climb since then. Um, there's been lots of highs and a few lows, but the majority are highs. Probably the most interesting is I've done a uh, replica World War II fighter plane, a, a Mustang, for a guy that's been filmed on TV and been in magazines. So that was unusual. But yeah, no, you, that's what happens doing this job. You get all sorts. I'm really pleased I did it. Uh, it's been life-changing, but in a positive way. It's been hard work, but it was well worth it. I've been a Chips Away franchisee now for five years. I'm currently starting my sixth year. Um, I was an AA patrol for 10 years before I joined uh, Chips Away. I started on my own for the first two years and then took my son on, Joshua. He came on a, a government apprenticeship scheme and he just came out with me initially. Then I uh, leased another van and Joshua went out full time on his own. And recently in the last year, I've taken on a third person, Liam, who trained with Joshua and had already been working in the business. And he's now out in his van, my third van. I'm very lucky. I basically rely on repeat custom, word of mouth, which is really does get me a lot of extra work. And of course, uh, the leads from Chips Away. We've ended up spraying machinery for a, a car parts manufacturer near to here. They were so pleased with that, they got us to, to spray their entrance doors. Believe it or not, I'm doing another shop front next week. I don't like uh, doing it. I don't like going away from the cars, but sometimes uh, it can be uh, profitable. I do plan to develop a car care centre at some point in the future. The vans are a lower overhead, and I'm just hoping that Josh and Liam and uh, maybe one other would give us a head start in a car care centre over my next franchise period. That's certainly the plan. Over the five years, it's definitely been a been a, a good career move for me. I've been a Chips Away franchisee now for 13 years. I've been a franchisee for Chips Away for just over 10 years now. I started uh, Chips Away mobile. I had the van for three years, although a year fully mobile. I actually bought out a Chips Away operator that was operating in the town with me and moved my operation into a car care centre. I started off like most people, uh, mobile in a van, and um, I did that for about four years. And gradually over time, I found myself working closer and closer with a local franchisee who already had a small car care centre. As time progressed, I was passing him all of the larger repairs, and he was passing me all the repairs that were sort of out in the countryside or people who didn't want to come into the um, car care centre. It just made sense to join the two businesses together. We recently moved into a much larger unit and hopefully by the end of this year we'll also have a small spray booth installed. We're planning to take on a guy from a local body shop just around the corner who we've used for years, so he'll start doing the larger repairs for us. We've just employed a trainee, she's training up now and hopefully going on to head office to do her formal training. Well just recently we've been asked to repair somebody's uh, long boat or narrow boat. Of course we had to tell the customer that we weren't able to do it because we were a fixed based site so we couldn't actually come out to them. Uh, so we passed it over to a, a neighbouring mobile franchise. I can remember one particular day that was awful. Um, I knew the weather forecast was very bad for the afternoon and um, so I wisely put up my marquee. Um, I was working in a car park of a small local football club 
And then as the day progressed, the heavens just opened and the rain was torrential for hours and hours and hours. But luckily, I was underneath my marquee and I was quite happy and quite dry, only to then realise I'd actually set up in the lowest point of the car park. And towards the end of the repair, I was literally standing in four inches of water. All my little rubber kneeling mats were floating around with pots of paint on. But luckily, I managed to dry the repair and didn't electrocute myself. If you're just starting out in the franchise, it really is about your tenacity. It's about you working really hard, understanding that it's not an easy ride. Uh, you've got to get out there, you've got to talk to people, you've got to advertise, you've got to make people aware that you're there. Work really hard, do really good jobs, and hopefully you'll start getting referrals and repeats, and that's kind of where our business is built. I've been a trip suit with Franchisee for just over five years and prior to that I was in the electronics industry for more than 30 years doing international sales. I get made redundant just shortly after I turned 50 and I really had to do something. I had, my experience was all in sales and marketing and business startup and I thought Gypsy Way would be a good vehicle to do that. I knew I could do the business startup part, all I had to do was be able to paint cars. When I first started with Gypsy Way as a franchisee, I was a man in a van, like most of the other franchisees, and I wanted a car care centre like this. So I worked for five months on a mobile basis. When I say mobile, I mean off of the van, but mostly working on my driveway. So I created a workshop on my driveway with my marquee. I kind of had a figure in my head of around 300 pounds per day would be as much as you could do and expand your business at the same time. So if you're working, you still need to allow some time to do some marketing and to do some estimating. So I targeted myself at £300 a day. When I reached that, I decided that I had to go into the workshop. Today we're currently running around £1,000 a day. Setting targets and objectives are really important. If you don't know what you're trying to do, how will you know when you've got there? You have to set a target, achieve it, and then move on. I'm kind of fanatical about keeping a record of what I'd done this time last year and I just can see the growth year on year, month on month. We've repaired things other than cars. Sam, who's doing this, the social media, is trying to collate some of the, the things that we've been doing, but we've, we've repaired a, a Kumatsu digger, which is 30 tonnes. We had to go to the, the digger to repair it. We, we practically repainted the whole digger, painted vases, flowers, a neighbour of mine had an old fridge, an old Husqvarna fridge, that she wanted painted up in an old English white colour so that she could keep her wine in her fridge. And we painted it for her and she was delighted, but we also got some lettering for her. And she didn't have a smeg, but we made her a smug fridge, so she was really happy with that. Local marketing, we think, is very important to us, so we advertise in several, um, several magazines that are either free and public put through people's stores. There's the small A5. Uh, magazines and even an A4 magazine which has a different shelf life to the smaller magazine. It would go more to small businesses, barber shops, coffee shops. To be successful in this franchise I think you have to be very honest with yourself and you have to work really hard. There are some days which is, are difficult just like most people have a, a bad day at the office, you'll have a bad day in your van but you need to just work your way through that and every day is a new day. To sum up on my Chips Away experience, I would say it's very hard work, but if you persevere, you will get there, and well, the rewards are there in the end. I joined the network in March of 2001. Having grown up in a family business in the body shop industry, I knew that the traditional body shop model was was broken, needed to do something different. I'd come across uh, Chips Away franchise in the franchise magazine, looked into it for, for quite a while uh, and decided to give it a go. So it started with me in a van. Uh, six months later I took on my partner Barbara um, as my first employee although she probably wouldn't uh, like to be classed as such. We then opened a workshop, I think, the next month uh, to do us through the winter. Uh, in January of the following year, we took on another employee and the business pretty much snowballed from there. We had our first workshop for just over three years. Then we opened a second workshop, a much bigger one, which we had for another 
five or six years. And here we are now in our third generation workshop. Uh, we have an alloy rescue business, which is three vans, and we also have another two chips away vans uh, operating mobile as well. In terms of turnover, we're, we're looking to get to a million pound. I would say the, the, the low point um, would have been uh, when the recession impacted, uh, as it did to a number of businesses, it was that we'd, a period where we put our staff on a three day week, uh, and that was particularly difficult. Um, in the run-up to Christmas as it was. Fortunately, it, it was only for a period of five weeks. We had a contract to refurbish uh, just under 130 vehicles um, for a leasing company, which was at that point probably like getting another two months work um, overnight. So uh, it, uh, we went from a very low point to a very high point very quickly, which was great. We'd read it was actually a book that was handed out at one of the regional seminars, um, Raving Fans it was called, and one of the parts in that was that your customers are only your customers until something better comes along. And it sank in that our workshop perhaps wasn't the best that it could have been, the, the experience for the customer wasn't the best that it could have been, and we wanted to make sure that it was the best. The other points from the book was that you have to have a clear view or a clear vision of where you want to go and where you want to be and, and I'd always had a, a very clear picture of how I wanted my workshop to look and, and we're lucky that it, it looks exactly as, as the premises we have now. Every car that comes in, whether it's for a bumper scuff or a single wheel, we're always looking for more work out of that, um, particular companies as well. If you do one car for a company, we're always asking where the rest of the cars get fixed or do they have other vehicles, so we're always looking for opportunities. The location is key. We, we moved from a, a much quieter street. Uh, we're on a, a main road next to a subway station now, so in terms of access for people to drop off, go to work, go into town, go to the shops whilst the car has been repaired, we have people that will do whilst you wait repairs uh, at the moment. We have three motorways within half a mile. It was the driving force behind this particular location, just in terms of access. Uh, although the, the brand is particularly strong and people will search it out to put it right in front of them as we have, it's, it's drawn in a huge number of new customers. The fact that they can drive in off the motorway and see you know, this facility, the reception, the workshop, it gives them confidence. We've made it into a, a high street brand. It's been a roller coaster. We've had good days, bad days, highs and lows, but uh, yeah, every day is an adventure.